Nerd time. Hey friends, it's KT and this is something that I've been waiting for for quite a while. I think we're going on about a year since I actually ordered mine. Um, this is the, let's see if I can get all the parts of the name right. Hasbro Pulse Nerf Limited Halo Infinite Needler. It's got quite a bit of heft to it, actually. Uh, I am really, really pleased with this as someone who's been not just a Halo fan for a very long time, but a Bungie fan for an even longer time. I was very deeply into Bungie's marathon series of games that strongly influenced the Halo universe and went on to be a huge fan of Halo. I've actually been starting to make my way through the Bungie uh, Halo games on Legendary for the first time recently on live streams. So if you're also a Halo fan, consider checking that out. It's kind of fun. I know what I'm doing with the game, but not not really <laughs> so it's been a really good time um of course if you're into this please like this video subscribe to the channel um i want to keep doing this kind of content and i want to keep being able to nerd out on this stuff with you and share that so um supporting the channel helps a lot but yeah i have a lot of history with halo and this feels like a big fruition for that to come into the nerf world in a way that feels uh so much like the game, so accurate to the in-game object. You know, Halo Infinite also gave us a couple Master chief -y items, including the MA-40, which is a great blaster, but for obvious reasons they had to pick a paint job that was quite a bit less realistic, and um, that's awesome, and this is so much fun to play with, but there's a different level when you get to something like this that's got the lights, that's got the detailing, um, and that costs quite a bit more money. And I'm honestly really excited that this came out the way it did uh, because the Nerf Limited line has had a very short but pretty difficult history, uh, starting with the Mandalorian Ambin Pulse Phase Rifle or whatever. There were so many issues with it. The boxes came with the shipping labels slapped right on top, these collectible boxes that are supposed to be part of the product. The product itself just felt bad. Uh, a lot of peoples are breaking. I know that berets recently broke pretty famously. It just seemed like a low quality product, especially considering the time and money that it took to go into it. Also, a lot of them have been appearing on Amazon at the same price as the pre-order, sometimes available before people were getting their pre-orders. So it was almost hard to pre-order this, seeing all these things happen with the, with the pulse rifle but I am a big enough Halo fan that I stuck it out and um, having it in my hands now, I'm very glad. I will say I know that it is available on Amazon with like two day shipping already for the same price that I paid for it, but I did get mine around the same time that people ordering it on Amazon would be getting it. So it almost feels a little silly to have pre-ordered it that way, especially since they don't charge you the day of they just charge you when it's ready to ship. It feels kind of weird, but it, ultimately it's neither here nor there. They did deliver the product as promised. Well, it looks like I may have spoken too soon because just yesterday on Black Friday, the day that I received my needler, it was available on Amazon for $69.99. Thank you to American Foam for pointing this out on Instagram. Um, yeah, pretty unfortunate uh, to have spent the time and money to pre-order something and to be punished yet again. I'm still very happy with the product. It doesn't change what I have in hand, but um, you know, could have saved 30 bucks and basically gotten it at the same time. And to get more into the Nerf Limited of it all, we can talk about the box a little bit. The box of course is styled after Halo Infinite, which is not my favorite Halo game, but that is the one that is current, and so that's the one that all the current line of products are based on. This has uh, very much a Banished vibe. A lot of the decorations on this match the look of Banished hardware throughout the game, and it looks great. It looks very good. Uh, the front of the box is not that exciting, honestly. It's got the Halo logo and it's got the Banished stylings, but that's kind of all that's going on. That kind of continues around the sides. There's this this cardboard strap that goes all the way around and it's taped on, but it's not really covering up much. Underneath here is just the same Nerf Limited seal. Now on the back, you can see the needler burning its way through the box. This looks awesome. I think it looks great. 
I'm not really a box person, but I am gonna keep this one for sure. Uh, it, it, it does have a little bit of extra flair to it. I'll probably, there we go. But what I really need to do right now is take you backwards through the box experience because something was done with the needler that was not done with the pulse rifle that I'm pretty excited about. This is the box that the box was in. The nondescript Hasbro box that was outside the special uh, needler box. And then that box shipped inside this box. So we don't seem to be having a repeat of the uh, Amazon shipping fiasco that we had with the pulse rifle. And I, I wanna believe that that's because Hasbro really learned from the problem the first time. I think that's true. I think they recognize that having these shipping problems, having the boxes be destroyed before they got to customers was a significant enough issue that they needed to put extra effort and resources into it. I just realized I've been recording with my heaters on this whole time, so sorry about all that noise you've been listening to. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, one thing that the Needler did not do that a different pulse rifle, the Aliens pulse rifle did do uh, is, it just came in this tray. The Aliens pulse rifle has a really cool box that looks like a case that the actual pulse rifle would ship in. There's a little compartment for the ammo. I think that looks awesome. This just came in a tray. All the parts were kind of in here. It was tidy and it was nice. It does have these hexagons on it. I almost want to believe that that was an intentional choice. The hexagon thing is a big part of Halo Infinite. And so maybe that's an intended thing, but this kind of just feels like a generic pressed fiber packaging. I don't know, what do you think? There is of course a redeemable code for unlocking something in game. I'm not sure what, I haven't looked at it or looked into what it might be. But the really funny thing is I got five and each one of them has a different rating uh, for a different region. I guess they couldn't fit them all on one card for some reason and their solution was just to send all five cards. Uh, this is probably something that's only happening in the pre-order ones. I assume there's some part of their process where they couldn't separate them by shipping country. Seems a little ridiculous, but fine. I have five of these cards. Only one of them has a code though. They just sent five cards. And then of course we also get a manual uh, and it is actually a multicolor printed manual. There's purple and black uh, and shades of gray on here. And this is actually how I wanna go through the blaster because normally Nerf manuals just kind of get tossed, but there's actually some features on this that I would have not noticed necessarily if I hadn't gone through and looked at the paperwork. Something that I definitely wouldn't have noticed for a while. Drum access cover on this side, but only on this side, notably not on the other side. On the left side only, this pops open. And the only thing that that allows you to do is rotate the drum. Now it is theoretically possible to load this blaster by simply sticking darts down the front here, but you would have to rotate the drum by firing it in order to get to all the things. This allows you to rotate it manually so you can actually access all the cylinders. As something that you actually wanna to take to an event to try to win a game, this loading mechanism is absolutely disqualifying. Um, there's no way that anybody's got time to reload their blaster this way if they're trying to actually use it in an event. However, this absolutely does not bother me. I don't care even in the slightest. The use cases for this in terms of actually firing it are cosplay in a situation where it's okay to be shooting Nerf darts or display in your office or in your house where you're occasionally gonna pick it up and shoot at somebody. This is perfect for an office Nerf war. It's the coolest thing you could possibly have on your shelf, I think. Now, when you're done with this, you click this shut and it's ready to go. We'll get back to the functionality with this as it associates with the lights later. Next thing down on the manual is the trigger. Uh, you can probably guess how that works, but it is a full auto blaster. You just hold it down. The lights on the needler are powered with six AA batteries. There's two screws to remove on the bottom of the blaster. This whole cover pops off. You put your six batteries in, you pop it shut. That's all there is to it. Now the display off on switch, this is an interesting one. If you click it to the one direction, it is actually ready to fire. If you click it to the two direction, it goes into a display only mode and the lights stay on and they very gently pulsate. It looks really, really nice. It will stay on for about two hours. And I actually timed this today and stayed on for almost exactly two hours and then turned itself off. 
Now the next thing on here that I did not expect is touch sensor. When the blaster is left alone, the lights will stay off, but when you touch the handle right here, it senses your touch and it'll turn it on. So in display mode, that means if it's been on for two hours and it turns off, you just grip the handle and it turns it back on. If you put it in fire mode and the lights are off, when you pick it up, the lights are supposed to turn on and there we go. So here it is in fire mode and I press touch it and after a slight delay, it turns on. Works very consistently. It's a neat feature and not something that I expected in this blaster at all. That was very much a surprise. Um, and I think it's a very cool one. Now, while we're talking about the lights, uh, let's talk about what the lights do while you're firing. As you hold down the trigger and it fires all 10 darts, the lights all slowly turn off in uh, groups of one or two. Clearly there's 10 LEDs coming down here, so it's not like a specific needle turns off each time, but it looks very good. Uh, I'm impressed with it, honestly. Now coming back up to the drum access door, when you open the drum access door, this light turns off and then you fill your drum and when you close it, the whole blaster turns back on as if it's reloaded. So all in all, I'm really impressed with the lighting functionality on this blaster. I think it looks awesome. It makes it a killer display piece and it makes it a great cosplay piece. The needles are flexible plastic. They're pretty rubberized. Uh, I would consider them quite safe. Obviously they're not a melee toy, uh, but I am not concerned with poking an eye out nor am I concerned with them breaking off. I'm sure that they would get marred if this were dropped on concrete or if this were scrapped somewhere. And I. Definitely I'm not taking this to any games or any events for that reason. Uh, it's definitely a collector's item and it's, if it gets played with, it'll be in the house. There is also on the back here, what looks like a needle counter. This is just a light. There, These don't turn on and off individually. This won't tell you how much ammo you have. Um, obviously there's more lights here than there are actual darts. This is more related to the needle count on the top of the blaster. You got two, three, four, five, four, two, three, four, five, four. And now for possibly my favorite feature, it came with a display stand. I am so excited about this because uh, I have my Boomco needler, which I'll compare the Halo, the new needler to in a little bit. Not having a display stand for that has been such an annoyance. Um, and this thing is life-changing. It fits the blaster perfectly. It's extremely simple, but I don't expect much more than this. It, you know, it's got the Nerf Limited logo on it. It says needler on the front. It's clear plastic, it's unobtrusive, and it does the job well. The front sort of hexagonal part of this fits on the front, the uh, grip fits on it very nicely back here, and, and it's as simple as that. Um, this is definitely gonna be something that's in my stream backdrops a lot, something that just spends time on the shelf that I enjoy, um, and then gets pulled out every now and then to blast my kids with or let them run around the house with. And having a proper display stand for it is pretty game-changing. Now you can't talk about a Nerf Blaster without talking about the grip at some point. And I will say uh, the grip on this is pretty atrocious. Uh, it's a really funny angle for your hand. Uh, this is sort of squared off in a weird way. I subtract absolutely zero points for that though. Uh, this is designed as a realistic prop. Um, I guarantee you Master Chief's hand was not comfortable on the needler that was designed for Ungoy to use. It's just simply not designed for human hands. And I think that they did a good job of sort of splitting the difference and making it decent to use while still being close to the source material. And speaking of the source material, we can talk cosmetics here a little bit. Um, it's very close to the Halo Needler. This is the pretty side. The only difference between the pretty side and the ugly side is there's no screw holes on this side. Uh, over here, you've got the legal text and screw holes, and otherwise it looks literally the same. Uh, the stand, of course, is set up in the correct direction to have the needler text and show the pretty side of the blaster. Now on the functionality and performance, uh, I did put this over the chronograph and I got the Nerf average. It's shooting 70 FPS very consistently, very, very consistently. And I think a lot of that has to do with the type of blaster that it is. Probably the closest analogy to the Needler is the Power Bell, which is a battery powered springer, similar to the Stampede, where there's actually a spring and a plunger tube inside here. It, you put in batteries and it pulls it back and it fires the dart out on its own. And then this drum rotates. This is even also a 10 round drum. Uh, it's very, very similar. I would not be surprised if they borrowed the mechanism from the power bell. And of course the other important comparison to make is the original Boomco needler. And I'm really bummed because I just pulled this off the shelf to do this comparison. 
and realized that I left batteries in it a little too long and they corroded. <laughs> and even cleaning the contacts and changing the batteries, it wouldn't power up. But the light functionality on this was you pull the trigger and all they all turn on. They do a little bit of a glow thing uh, in display mode. And then it also has a switch to go into firing mode. And then each time you pull the trigger, one light turns off. Each of these slots was actually here to store an extra Boomco straw. So you could fill your eight straws in the front and then have a full reload up here. They would glow with LEDs when they were uh, up here and the lights were on. Very cool, but this is a single shot springer. You pull back, push forward, press the trigger, it fires one and then it rotates to the next part of the drum. This of course was based on an earlier era needler, but it's actually quite close in a lot of ways. The new needler is a better color match to the one currently in game, uh, but this was not too far off previously, but I just, the level of detail on the new one just is better. <laughs> it's just nicer. Although being me, being a massive nerd, I'm obviously really happy to have both. Um, I just wish I had a nice stand to put this one on the way that I do uh, the new one. So all in all, am I happy with my purchase? I'm absolutely happy with my purchase. Uh, and it wasn't cheap, but um, at around $100 as a shelf ornament, I don't know if every Halo fan needs this. The fact that it comes with a display stand is great, especially if you're someone who's probably not gonna be playing with it just to be able to pop it on your shelf with your other Halo collectibles because it is a very awkward shape to try to get <laughs> to stand up on its own. It looks fabulous, it works well. So in the end, my big thoughts on this, I'm extremely happy with my purchase. I'm really happy to have it. If you're a big Halo fan and you have the money to put in a hundred bucks on something that's mostly gonna sit on your shelf because the quality of the product is there. Uh, it, it looks great and it feels great and the box opening experience was good enough and I think it's nice to see that there is some redemption in the Nerf Limited line. It's been a rough start. I'm a huge Star Trek fan also, and I haven't even talked about the new Star Trek blasters. That may need to get its own video. I'm a little bit behind. I haven't been making a lot of content lately and I'm getting back on the horse right now. And this showing up was a big impetus to crack the lights out again and, and get back to it. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you're trying to make a purchase decision on this, uh, I hope this is useful. If you're just curious about it and kind of want to see what it's about, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe. I'll probably be talking about this and doing a bunch of short pieces on this blaster on TikTok in particular. So thanks again so much for watching and until next time, I will see you on the field.